Are you new to wet felting and you're interested in creating a sculptural vessel but you're not quite sure how? My name is Nicola Brown and during this long video I'm going to take you step by step through the whole process where you can create something like this. Now you may be asking yourself what's the purpose of a felt vessel or bowl? I love to just have them as decorative pieces in my house However, many people like to put things like their keys in them or put a little glass jar and have some flowers. So you can make something that's functional, but for me, I usually make them as a decorative piece. Let's go. So the first thing I need to do is select the wool fiber that I'm going to use. It is possible to felt vessels, bowls with alpaca or other fiber, but I recommend you start with something simple if you're new to sculptural three-dimensional work. And I'm choosing to use these green, uh, bat, this bat, this green bat, but I could also use roving. And I recommend that you just have one main color for your vessel. I wouldn't recommend if you're using roving that you use something like this particular one here, which has a beautiful blend of colors. But when the different layers of your piece combine, this will actually be very, very muted and you won't get this beautiful striped effect. This would be more suitable in my estimation for spinning. So if you're unsure how roving or bats get laid out, I do have a short YouTube video which shares the differences between them, how they're prepared in the woolen mill and how to use them. But you're going to actually see me using this fiber to create a vessel from start to finish. In addition to the wool fiber, which forms the structure of the vessel, I like to embellish using different sorts of embellishing fibers. And again, if you are new to wet felting and you haven't felted a vessel before, I recommend you keep this very simple. I'm using an image of some beautiful dogwood flowers to inspire the colors that I'm using. And that's a tip for you. If you look out and about, if you look at the flowers in your garden, often you can be inspired by the different color combinations. And green, this chartreuse or apple green, is one of my favorite colors to work with. But personally, I rarely use pink. So it's going to be interesting to see how this actually turns out. I like to work on bubble wrap when I'm making any felt, although you can use solar pool cover as well. I find the bubble wrap though is nice and flexible, so that would be my preference. I have two pieces of bubble wrap. They're both the same size and they're bigger than the piece I'm going to be working on. I have a couple of towels. I use these to dry my hands when necessary so I don't get the dry fiber wet unless by design and also I like to finish my felt in a towel and these tea towels are very handy. I have a bowl for water and I have something called a bowl browser. This is a sprinkler that's very very easy to use when you are felting. I'm going to drop a link to this in the video description below. But if you don't have one, just make up something yourself. You can use a soda bottle, a plastic bottle, and you can just punch a few holes in the top. And in that case, I would make a soap and water solution rather than applying the soap, which is an olive oil or any gentle soap. I apply my soap through a net, but if you don't have a net, you can make a solution of soapy water and apply it like that. The felting net is really handy. This is an old piece of an Ikea curtain which I bought for the purpose. This is my favorite felting net. This was my friend's grandmother's bathroom net curtain and this is particularly good. It's quite plasticated and you'll see as I make my vessel how handy the felting net is. You're going to need a very sharp pair of scissors preferably a small one. These are Fisker's scissors. And again, I'll drop a link to these in the video description on YouTube. But um, any sharp scissors will do. And these are for cutting 
a little hole in your felt when it comes to the time to remove the template which is what is shaping the felt and helping create it into a three-dimensional shape. And then I have a tool called a prodder. And this prodder is something, it's a Nikki and Nikki prodder. My friend and I, she's really the designer, but I helped her um, develop some felting tools. And I use this a lot for shaping sculptural felt. But as I said, you can use things, uh, I have tools in my larder and a wooden spoon is fantastic. Anything that's rounded and smooth and a different shape, even a little clothes peg like this, you can put this inside your vessel and you're going to see how I'm going to shape my felt and you'll see how useful things like these can be. Now there is one final thing that I need and that is a template or a resist. And this is what actually creates the shape of the vessel that I'm going to make and it's also what prevents wool from one side felting through to the other and I'm going to explain clearly as I lay my piece out how this happens but I like to use something called laminate floor underlay and um, there are some alternatives. I just used the bowl as a guide and I just cut a circle from this laminate floor underlay. Now when you get yours, if you get it from a hardware store, it might just look white, it may have no silver on it, that's absolutely fine. But if you can't find any, sometimes you can get this craft foam, anything that's soft and flexible but with a little bit of thickness is good. I don't like it to be too thin because if it's too thin you won't be able to feel the edge of your piece as you're felting it. And now I think it's time to talk about how the vessel, the structure of the actual vessel itself. So I'm just going to show you one of my own felted vessels. This particular piece was created in white and then I eco printed it afterwards. But the way I created the vessel is exactly the same as how I will be creating this colored one for you today. I can see that it's three dimensional, but everything starts flat or two dimensionally around your plastic template. And it's important to understand that the fiber that's at the edge of your template that goes over from one side to the other that's what holds the structure together. And in the completed piece, when it is shaped, that edge is not at the bottom. That edge is really sort of around this part here of the finished shaped vessel. So it's very important to make careful, um, be very careful and mindful when you're working on the edge of your template. You're going to see how I do that. But as a beginner, and even as a more experienced felt maker, I find it's very, very helpful to think of a three-dimensional piece like this as if the plastic template is a letter and the fiber, the felt on the outside is an envelope. So I'm going to just insert this template in here, just for a minute, and I'm going to squash it down. So as I'm felting my piece, I have got the wool fiber wrapped around the plastic template. And fiber from one side of the layer will go over the edge of the template and combine with fiber on the other side. And this plastic template, it has two different, um, two different purposes I suppose. The first is so that the fiber from the top side doesn't go through to the bottom side and the second is to determine the shape your piece is going to end up. So for this demonstration I'm using a very simple round shape and for the demonstration I'm actually going to cut the circle in the center, the opening, rather than at the side here and I recommend you cut it in the center as well but just I wanted you to understand that the edge of your template ends up here. So it's important if you're using embellishing fibers just to drape them over the edge a little bit as well. And your piece is going to shrink approximately 30%. So when I was making this vessel here, 
it would have had a bigger template than the one we're working on. So to give you a guideline, this particular vessel weighs just under four ounces, which is approximately 110 grams. So you don't need a huge amount of wool to make a vessel on a smaller template. And I'm going to now set this up with a piece of bubble wrap with the bubbles up and I'm going to get some hot water and you can just follow along in real time if you would like to create a vessel with me. At the start of any side, what I do is I lay one very, very fine light layer of fibers radiating out around the edge of the template. This is really important. These are the fibers that will help combine both sides of your vessel together. And I'm working with the bats, as I said to you, I need to make sure that I have a very fine layer of fiber. But if you're working with roving, just make sure it's an extremely light um, layer that you put around. And I'm just going to go around the edge of my template and I'm just overlapping each shingle as I would if I was making flat felt. I'm overlapping each shingle with the previous one and I'm coming out approximately a centimeter, maybe a little bit more beyond the edge of my template. And the important thing is that you radiate these fibers around the edge. It's not a big, thick, clumpy layer of fibers. It's a very, very fine layer of fiber. Don't worry if your template is bending up a little bit, that's absolutely fine. Once you have all your layers on, it's going to be totally flat. Now, if you're using um, roving instead of bats, you may find that the fiber is coming in more than my bat is. Don't worry about that, that's absolutely okay. The important thing is that you only have the very fine tips going over the edge and you have a light layer of fiber radiating around the outside. So do not be tempted to top up anything at this stage. It's always better to have more fine layers rather than fewer thick layers. So once you've radiated your fibers around the very outside of the template, you're going to start laying out the body of your piece. So this is going to be side one, layer one. And what you're going to do is lay all the fibers in a vertical way, as exactly the same as if you were laying out flat felt. But the one important thing is you're going to be careful to try not to go over the edge of the template. Once you wet the fiber, you'll see, or once I wet my fiber, you will see what happens. What's here will just shift outwards a little bit. So there's going to be plenty to pull over the edge. So I start laying down my fiber, trying not to go over the edge of the piece, overlapping each shingle of fiber with the previous one. Whoops. I actually tend to lay out my felt standing up when I'm working by myself, but for the purpose of the video I'm sitting down, I actually find that a little bit more awkward. Try and have each shingle of fiber even. So that one layer isn't thicker than the other. When I get down to the bottom, I need to be careful not to come out over the edge really there. I'll just come down near the end of the template. I can put my hands on it and I know from how I was laying it out that this portion here is a little bit finer than the other. So I'll just top that up. 
And with practice, you'll get used to this. But if I'm making an important piece or something for an exhibition, I would always weigh the different layers of fiber. So this is side one, layer one, laid out. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sprinkle this with warm water and I'm going to add my soap through a felting net. And this is a stage where you could choose to have a soapy water solution there and just sprinkle that on and not use the net at all. But I find I prefer using the felting net and I get a more even amount of soap. I can predict how much I have basically. So I'll go around the outside and then I just go back and forwards. I don't want to add too much water or too much soap. I don't want the fibre to start coming together before I have the complete piece laid out. So I lay my felting net down and with my solid bar of soap, I just work from the centre outwards because this is a round template. And I just go over the fibre lightly once I put my hands down and I press out. And if it's still a little bit dry in places, you can add a bit more water through the net. I actually think I might have added slightly too much fiber there, but no point stressing about that now. And the important thing is when I peel the net back, I want to be careful not to lift the fibre off the resist. So I just very carefully push that fibre down onto the bubble wrap. I keep the net low to the table and I get my second piece of bubble wrap and I put that down onto the vessel. Every time I put a piece of bubble wrap down, I push on top of the felt and I try and make sure that the felt is making contact with the bubble wrap. And then I turn the piece over very carefully. So I hold the two layers of bubble wrap and I move my hands in and I also hold the actual template and the felt and I turn it gently. I don't slap it down on the table. And then I push down firmly, just on top of the resist. And this time, I don't mind if the wool fibre is coming up towards me as I lift this up, because in fact, what I need to do is I need for these fibres to come up and go down onto the template. And this is where it's important that these fibres are the ones that are going to be making sure that side one and side two of the first layer actually combine. So I just pull these in carefully. I can add a bit more soap on my hands. So don't be afraid of this. When I started felting, I was much more anxious about touching my felt, but honestly, so long as your hands are soapy, it's okay. You can touch the fiber and the felt as you're making it. Now, I'm actually going to carefully lift this up. I can see that it's a little bit light there and there, whereas here there's more fiber coming over the edge. So if there was an area that was particularly light, I could just add a very, very small bit of fiber just in that area. And that's basically almost like a repair. I don't want to go overboard and add too much fiber. So I'm now ready to lay out the second side of layer one exactly the same way as the first. I'm going to do a very fine layer of fiber around the outside and then I'm going to infill with all the fiber going vertically. So that's what I'm going to do now. Just remember with these radiating fibers, it's a light layer, not a thick one, because you don't want to build up a really, really um, 
big ridge around the edge of your vessel. Approximately a centimeter over the edge of the template. And now I'm infilling all vertically. So right up to the edge of the template. This can be a little bit tricky. It's actually easier if your template is larger doing this, but of course a larger piece takes a longer amount of time to felt it. Remember, if you haven't wet felted before, I do have a full beginner's tutorial and it takes you through step by step with these shingles and how to lay them out, etc, etc. So you might find that helpful before you would felt your first facile. So now I've laid out the second side of the first layer. So I repeat the wetting process. As you build up layers with any piece of felt, you need to actually use less water because there will already be water in the wool underneath your hands. But for this first layer, I use a little bit more water than I will in subsequent layers. If it's squishy, add more water through the net. And with the vessel, I'll just move the fibre out on this side and then I'll pull it up tightly on the other. So everything that I'm doing is pulling the fibre up around the template. But there's one little tip for you. When you've completed your first layer and each subsequent layer, I recommend that you add a marker here because it's really difficult to remember where you are, say if you go for a coffee or something. So what I'm going to do is I'm just getting a piece of wool that's a different color, but you could use anything here. I'm giving it a little rub because I don't want this to felt in. And I now know that this is the completion of my first layer of fiber. I have wool on both sides of my template and this marker tells me that this is side two of layer of a layer. Okay, so I press down, I turn over. Now, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to rotate the piece and I'm going to lay my ne next layer of fiber like this. Um, so I always like laying it um, vertically to me. In fact, I think what I'll do is I'll turn it slightly sideways. So I'm going to be laying it this way and then eventually when I do my third layer, I lay it that way. So each layer is at a slightly different angle to the previous one. So here's another tip for you that I find very helpful. When you have fiber on both sides of your template and you turn it over, as well as pulling these loose fibers, these fibers that are holding everything together, as well as pulling them up, I like to just very carefully and gently pull the previous layer up 
around the template a little tighter. Now this might look wrinkly, but trust me, if you're gentle, you're not going to damage it and it will all felt in. So now I go around the outside and I just pull this fibre up and I'm gently smoothing it down onto the previous layer. I would have to say that people work differently. Not everybody puts such a large overlapping layer around, but that's okay. You can just do what you feel comfortable with, but this is what I recommend if you're new to, to felting a vessel. In fact, I'll just rotate my bubble wrap so it's easier for you to see. So now I'm going to repeat what I did twice more. So I'm going to end up with three layers of fibre on each side of the template and at that stage we're, I'm going to add the embellishing fibres. Try not to titivate things too much, but if you feel something really is too thick under your hands, it would be good to just stop what you're doing and just reassess. Make sure that you don't put too thick a layer around the outside here, these radiating fibers. And now I'm infilling. I am actually going to stand up. It's easier to see where the edge of the template is if I stand up. Don't be afraid to put your hand on if you're not quite sure where the edge is. Try not to go over it. Sometimes I think I should tattoo the phrase wet, net and soap to my forehead because it's something that I say quite a lot. You can see here that that has flattened quicker than the other side did and that's because there's already damp wool under the dry. It looks as if I don't have quite enough fibre radiating over the edge there, but rather than top it up on this side, I will assess the situation when I turn it over. And when I turn it over, this piece is going to be near my tummy. 
push down hard just on the template. So two things. I actually think there is enough fibre there. Maybe a tiny, tiny bit more, the tiniest bit more. And I need to now remove this marker. And I like to put it beside because otherwise it can be difficult. I might forget to reposition it. So I know I'm now completing side two, layer two. Pull those edges in gently and now pull up the wool, the radiating fibre. So I'm going to add the tiniest bit more fibre there. A really, really, really fine amount. And that's just topping up the previous layer. And now I'm going to finish side two. And I will just behave as if that fibre isn't there. I will add more fibre on top of that. Take your time with the laying out process. Enjoy it. It should be fun and not stressful. So again, I'm being careful not to go beyond the edge of the template, or I'm trying not to go beyond the edge of it. I'm trying to keep my shingles of wool as even as possible. So that's side two, layer two. And note as well, I'm not giving a big rub with the soap at this stage. I just want to make sure that there's water and soap on every layer, but I'm not trying to start the felting process until I've finished laying out the piece. Press down, peel the fibre back. Put 
position my marker again. Rub from the center out. This will help encourage the fiber from this side to go over the edge of the template to the other. Push down just on where the template is and bring fiber in. Now you may think this looks a little bit wrinkly, but this will all, or should all, felt down nicely. And I'm just going to rotate that slightly and I'm going to lay out my third layer of fibre. Then comes the fun part, the embellishing. If I feel that something is too thick for the outside, I'll just peel it again. It's probably easier when you're working with roving to, to get very fine shingles. It's not quite so easy sometimes with the bats. So just be careful it's not too thick at the outer edge. Any little scrappy bits of roving or bats you can just keep and you can save them for decoration for another project for adding embellishments or something. And now to infill. Again, this is a little bit thick under my hands, so I'll divide it in two. With experience, you get used to um, what feels correct under your hands, but don't be too hard on yourselves when you're starting out. Just need to get a little bit of water. I'm actually working with hot water rather than cold because I don't want to have to put too much water on. It's a little bit like getting into a warm bath. The wool fibre relaxes more with the warm water rather than with the cold.
I can now feel the edge of my template as well through the layers of fiber underneath my fingertips. Always being careful to hold the template and the felt when I turn it. I know I'm now on side three, or the second side of layer three. I remove that. So the final radiating fibers, side two, layer three. If you have any anxiety about this, I suggest you just write down your layers on a piece of paper and you tick them off as you complete them. And that way you won't forget what you're doing. And now I'm going to infill. If I'm working on a big project myself, I might have music on at this stage, but actually most of the time, um, particularly for smaller pieces like this, I would prefer working with just the sound of the birds outside, um, no music, no radio. I like working in peace and quiet. Okay, so when the final side is laid out, I'm going to wet and soap this piece. I am going to turn it over. There's no need for my marker anymore because I have finished um, the main layout. However, there could be times when I would use a marker and that would be if I had something interesting on the inside of the piece. So for those of you with more experience, you might choose to have something on the inside and a marker might help you identify where that was for the future, for when you're going to cut open your piece. But as a first vessel, I have nothing on the inside, so the marker is obsolete now. Can actually feel a little bit more fiber around the outside so I'm hoping with this demonstration I haven't laid too much fiber out but anyway we'll see if I've laid too much there may be a little bit of a ridge around that outside seam so I'm going to lay my embellishment fibers down now and so I'm giving a little bit of an extra rub here 
before I turn this back over. And when I started to felt, I was always told dry fiber on dry and wet on wet. But actually, I like having some water and soap on my piece before I lay the embellishing fibers down. And in that way, if I'm not happy with the position of the fibers, I can reposition them. But it has another um, purpose as well. If your wool fiber is wet before you put your embellishing fibers, you can actually reposition them if necessary and they don't felt in quite as much so they appear more vibrant on the surface of your finished piece. So once I pull those final fibres up, I'm actually pulling them firmly against the edge of my template. I'm going to put my felting net back down and I'm going to just add a very small bit of soap here on this side. This is actually side one. I'm just going to give it a little bit of a rub. I'm ready now to add my embellishing fibers. Now, I personally wouldn't be worried um, putting my embellishing fibers down here where there are the little wrinkles, but I'm just going to turn it over because I suspect that if you're new, you might be less anxious looking at this side of my piece. So, when I'm laying my embellishing fibers out, the first thing I need to do is just dry my hands because you don't want your wet hands really dealing with the embellishing fibers. You'll find them more difficult. And I'm going to keep this very simple. As I explained when I shared that completed vessel, the eco-printed vessel earlier, imagine this is, is the vessel. This edge of the template will end up not at the bottom of, of your, your bowl or your vessel, it will end up in the middle, sort of here. So I want to put any embellishments on this side, I want them to drape over the outside of my template. So I'm going to just start by adding some simple strands of green silk. And I don't want to get too complicated with this, I'm just going to put some bits of silk down and I'm going to drape them, just let them hang over the edge of my template there. And in fact I'm not happy with that so the fact that I've already got soap here I can pick that up. What I'm going to do is, um, let's see here. so this silk actually was a gift from a friend and it's already been handled a bit so sometimes it can be difficult to pull out but I'm going to take a bigger piece of silk, just put that down there. And I'm using some flowers that I saw while I was out with my mother yesterday. I'm using them as inspiration. So I'm going to be embellishing with green and with pink. And the green is going to give a shimmer on the surface of the felt, but it's not going to stand out as much as the silk fiber will, because the silk is a contrasting fiber, obviously contrasting colour. And later on, where I'm cutting the opening for my vessel is going to be this centre point here. That's where I think I'm going to cut it. But I could change my mind and I could actually open the vessel on the other side. But I'll make that decision later. And here's some silk throasters waste. This particular silk is most similar in colour to the flowers that I saw. And it's a little bit nubbly, but I think it will be quite interesting when it felt thin. I'm not happy with that piece. But don't get too hung up on this and don't make your embellishing fibers too thick or you may discover that they don't felt in easily. I'm also going to include some of this lurid pink. 
just because it's so wacky. And again, this came from a friend. It wouldn't be something that I would have chosen myself, probably. So I'm going for one bright splodge of pink and then I'm going for the rest in a darker color there. Now, this is actually quite a lot of silk fiber, but I'm happy with this. I'm just going to see how it goes. You may choose not to put as much of your embellishing fiber on top because these fibers don't felt by themselves. They need the wool underneath to come up through them and grip them. So these may not be the easiest to felt, but I'm just going to um, leave it like this because I kind of like it. So I'm going to put a little bit of water on top of the embellishing fibers. I could put my net and soap down and then pull them over to the other side, but because I have so many fibers coming out at the end, I'm actually going to do this instead, and I will come back and soap that in just one minute. So I'll just push this down. And that's just an executive decision I'm taking. Should you want, you can soak that side now anyway. But I'm turning it over, pressing down on the vessel, but not on the edges. And now I have the opportunity, while the fibers are still relatively dry, just to pull them up onto this side. And I can choose to add more fibers here on this side, or I can leave them as they are. And I pull the edges in. And I think I'd like another splash of this brighter pink. So I, I may end up making the center of my vessel the hole here, or it may be on the other side. And I just want a bit more of this virulent pink, which really is pretty shocking. Shocking a color. I'm going to put it here. Hmm. Not sure, but anyway, let's just see. Let's just leave it like that. So I can choose later to cut a hole in here if I want to. And that pink sort of ties in with that pink. And little bit of water here and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add soap on I don't like that take that off I'm going to add soap on this side now so I'm adding the soap through my net and because I have the complete vessel laid out I don't want to push the fibers outwards now. I'm actually going to put the soap on and rub it inwards because now my concentration at the beginning is all going to be on keeping those fibers tightly up against the template. And I'm just about ready to start the felting process. So I'm pulling everything in before I turn the piece back over to the other side. At this stage, you can add a small bit of soap and water onto your bubble wrap because you want your hands to glide on the bubble wrap and not rub the felt not damage or, or make too much pressure on the felt itself. I'm going to turn this over, press down, lift up, pull the fibers in with soapy hands. So I need to make sure every time now that I handle the felt, I'm pulling the fibers in with soapy hands. I'm now going to put the net down and I'm going to put my soap on this upper surface and then I'm actually going to start the felting process. 
So this is the first side that I laid the embellishing fibers on. I'm just giving it an extra little bit of soap with the emphasis on bringing things into the center of the package now rather than at the pushing them out. So I'm very happy with how that's looking. It's time to start felting. And as I say, all the emphasis now is going to be on pulling things in. And the reason for that is if the fiber from one side slips over the edge of the template and it meets the fiber from the other, you'll end up with a big seam around the edge. Now that might be something you want to play around with as a design feature, but in relation to actually choosing to felt a vessel, I think it's good to know how you can make your vessel without any very obvious line or ridge where that edge of the template is. So I'm now adding soap and water a little bit to the top of my bubble wrap. And it's worth just reminding everybody that whether you work with bubble wrap or solar pool cover, you want the bottom piece of wrap to have the bubbles facing up and the top piece to have the bubbles facing down. And those bubbles help with the felting process. So they're going to help massage your piece, but they're also quite gentle on it. So now that I've, I've got my package soaked, I'm going to go back and forwards 10 times everywhere and then a little bit extra around the outside of the package. And if you followed my full step-by-step -step flat felting tutorial, you'll know that's how I make all the felt. And it's important not to over rub in one place at the beginning because you don't want to run into problems. But equally, there is no substitute for this. You need to do this and you need to make sure that your bubble wrap doesn't rub like that against your felt. That's why we have the soap and water on the top. So back and forwards is one and I'm going to do that 10 times. So. And then when I've done that, I move to the next place. And the next. And if you notice, I overlap my hands. When I move from one place to another, I overlap the previous bit slightly. And when I'm at the edge, I also have my fingers curving over the edge of the piece. And then I need to come down here. So that's 10 rubs everywhere and now I just give a little extra rub around the outside. I lift the bubble wrap up and with my soapy hands I pull everything in and already I can see that although this isn't a colour scheme that I considered using until I saw some flowers yesterday, I can see that it's going to actually be a nice color scheme. So once I've given 10 rubs everywhere on this side and gone around the outside, I carefully turn the piece over, press down, lift the upper portion of bubble wrap back, and the first thing I have to do is pull those edges in again. So the whole time I want these edges to come up tightly against my template Put the bubble wrap down, a little bit of soap and water on this side, and I repeat that 10 rubs on this side. And then when I've done 10 rubs vertically, I just go all around the outside, feeling with the tips of my fingers around the edge, pulling the fiber in, and believe it or not, I can already feel that this fiber is going to felt quite quickly. I actually think I could do with very slightly more soap and water on this side. So I'm just going to put a little bit of water on my hand 
and I'm going to just give a little soap inwards. It just doesn't seem quite as, as moist as the other side. Let's have a look. Perfect. So I just keep turning the package and rotating it. Making sure the edges are pulled in against the template. and rubbing in different directions. With the circle, it's also nice to go in a circular motion a little bit. But remember, not too many more rubs at the beginning until you're certain that everything is coming together because you don't want to run into problems. Now, when I say problems, by that I mean you do too much rubbing in one area and you might work some creases into your project. As I say, I'm not a big fan of music when I'm working, so this is all filmed in real time so you can follow along with me, but I'm not going to talk while I'm doing this. So I'm just going to get into the rhythm and keep going. I'm actually happy that this is strong enough for me just to turn the piece over rather than turning it over within the bubble wrap. But if you're unsure, I recommend you just continue to rub it within the bubble wrap um, until it feels like it's changing under your hands. rotating it slightly. Now on this side here I actually feel it is very slightly too dry and when I put my finger down and I push on the felt as it's coming together I would like to see a little bit of water here and I would like to see as I push down I can see the water and after two seconds that water has dissipated and it's not visible. So I'm actually going to add a little bit more water on this side and I'm going to put the net on top of it just to protect it. 
you don't have the net you can just put your bubble wrap back down and I'm just going to give it a quick rub through the net pull the edges in and now Hmm, here is wetter, but the rest still needs a small bit extra water. It's very interesting. Let's see. Aha. Uh -huh. So I'm not sure whether you can actually see that, but there's a tiny bit of water uh, pooling at the tip of my finger and then it's gone after two seconds. So I'm happier with that. Back to my rubbing. As I rub around the outside edge, I'm feeling with my fingers and I'm trying to just feel that template through the plastic. Plenty of water on this side. As I feel the fibre coming together under my hands, I can start to rub it for longer than 10 rubs everywhere. I can also choose to rub either directly on the fibre or through the net. But if you don't have a net, please don't worry about this. Just work through the bubble wrap. If I feel it's not slipping enough, I add a bit more soap. The fiber I'm felting is actually merino and it doesn't need as much soap as some coarser fiber. Some of the coarser fiber needs less water and more soap. rotating it a bit more so that I'm rubbing in different directions every time. And if you're working through the net just don't rub for so long that it actually felts into your piece. You need to make sure you keep lifting the net up and then maybe alternating with the bubble wrap. Now, with experience, when you can feel your piece starting to come together, it's possible to felt directly with your hands on the fibre. And when I do that, I'm very gently pulling the fibre in towards the centre at the edge of the template. I wouldn't do this if I felt that the piece wasn't already starting to felt, because I would just run the risk of the fiber is all shifting but I can feel it's coming together so I'm happy just giving this a little bit of a rub directly on the felt with all the emphasis on bringing everything into the center. 
and then I'll go back to working on the bubble wrap just a few more times and then I will actually roll the piece and you'll see how quickly it shrinks at that stage. getting firmer around the edge of the template. So I'll just do a little bit of rubbing on this side directly on the felt. Plenty of soap on my hands. And I don't feel that this side is actually quite as felted as the other, so I'm going to go back to working on the bubble wrap. feels a little bit firmer now under my hands. So at the beginning, all this emphasis really is on getting the fibers to start to tangle together. And any pressure is coming from the outside in and downwards. But the felt is compacting more. It hasn't shrunk from side to side or anything yet. Everything is going downwards. And compacting. And this bubble wrap looks a little bit on the soapy side but because I'm doing this demo I'm not going to dry my hands I'll just keep going but you don't need to have it very soapy you just need to make sure it is soapy enough that your hands move. So many people actually roll their felt earlier than I do. I prefer doing more rubbing and less rolling. So you may have learned to felt a vessel and roll it very early on, but I find this is less pressure on my body working in this way. And I can work probably with slightly less shrinkage. It compacts more, but it may not shrink quite as much in other ways. starting to come together nicely. So I'm just about ready to roll. So when I start to roll the felt, it's going to start shrinking. So I need to be careful. This is a round piece. 
I need to be careful not to make too many rows in any one direction. I'm going to have the bubble wrap, <coughs> excuse me, which is a rectangle, this direction. And I'm going to use one of my tea towels, which I don't mind getting wet. I'm going to use one of these tea towels. When I have this piece rolled up, I'm going to also roll it in the, in the tea towel with the smaller pieces of felt. This is going to curve very quickly. The tea towel will help hold everything together. So I firmly roll and this top piece of bubble wrap is going to move away from me. That's normal. And then when I have it rolled up, I can feel some of the water going onto my, <laughs> onto my knees. I'm going to then roll it in this towel, which will just help keep it together and it will be easier to roll. I'm not going to put any pressure down. I'm just going to go back and forwards, which is one roll, and I'm going to roll only 10 times. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I can feel that this package is holding together well, so I'm actually going to give it another five. One, two, three, four, five. So that's 15 rolls. And for a small vessel like this, I feel that that's enough rolls at the beginning. So I move the towel. And I need to think of the bubble wrap like the bread in a sandwich and I need to think of the felt like the filling because if I just open this I might lose where the felt is. It's important that the bottom piece of felt has the bubbles upwards, the top piece of felt has the bubbles downwards and then I start to unroll. And can you see what's happened? Look at this. After just 15 rolls, can you see the curvature of this piece and how much that has already shrunk in this direction? And that's because I've been rubbing it and the pressure has been going downwards and it has been shrinking and compacting downwards and now it's shrinking in the direction I've rolled it. So it's very important that I flatten this down. I make sure that the edges are okay. I'm going to rotate it slightly and then I'm going to turn it over. And you'll see it's a bit more wrinkly on this other side. So that's the side that was at the bottom of the piece. And now I'm going to roll it from this direction. So it's turned over, it's been rotated slightly and now I'm going to give it 15 rolls in this direction. Don't worry about that top piece of bubble wrap. Into your damp towel or dry towel. This is just to help keep the package together. I'm not deliberately having it wet, but I don't mind if it is wet. And 15 rolls, so. off the towel with the bubble wrap. Check that the second piece of bubble wrap has the bubbles facing down. Open the package. And again, you can see how much it's shrinking. So I can actually gently pull it to stretch it slightly, but I need to check my edges. Always with soapy hands when I'm touching the felt. Turn it over. Rotate a bit. And again. So I just do this a few times until I'm confident that everything is coming together, it's shrinking, and that the template inside, the resist, feels like it wants to burst out of the package and at that stage I cut the opening 
to release the tension and you will start to see how the vessel is coming together. Now, if you find it easy to roll without the towel, that's okay. But particularly at the early stages, the towel is very helpful. And if I kept rolling, that would just get tighter and tighter and tighter. So it's important to stretch the piece, to rotate the piece, to turn the piece, and not to just keep rolling in the one direction or you're going to run into trouble. Okay, I can feel that needs the towel. If your package feels like it's flattening, my, mine didn't feel good there, just re-roll it. Don't be tempted to work with it if you're not happy. Just re-roll and take your time, put it into the towel. And I'm going to start putting a little bit more pressure down on this as well. in a minute. This one is really quite wet. So can you see it's really curving now and the template is feeling almost as if it wants to burst out, not quite. So I'm going to give this another roll in this direction. And then at that stage, I'll make a decision, I think, about where I would like to make the opening in the felt, whether I make my hole for the top of the vessel there or whether I make it there. So one more batch of rolling and then I'll cut that opening. More pressure. So the next stage of the process, when you cut the opening in your felt, don't cut it too soon. Try and wait until it feels as if the template the resist inside wants to burst out of the piece but this is important when you make a cut any cut in your felt the cut edge always stretches so don't make your opening too big I like to think of the there's a little disc on top of some of our two or three liter milk cartons and it's about that size so I will make a smallish hole I will seal the edges and then I can stretch it a bit so that's something just to be aware of and I'm using my small Fiskars scissors now when you cut the opening you don't want to cut through the plastic template to the other side you want to just go down to make an incision and then you want to just cut it around. So I'm just going to put the tip of my scissors down and I'm just going to make an incision until I know I can feel the plastic and then what I'm going to do is just cut. I just need to make sure I've gone the whole way through. 
then I'm just going to put the tip of the scissors in and I'm just going to rotate the piece and cut a rough circle. Now some people are very precise and they measure everything. I like to do this sort of thing freehand, that's just how I roll. But if you're very precise, you might like to draw this out first. So I've only removed a small section and the most important thing that I need to do now is I need to seal these cut edges and I do that by putting plenty of soap on my hand and I put one hand in and the other on top and I like to rotate around like this when I'm sealing this cut edge. And this can take time. So it's not going to be the easiest for you to see, but basically I'm wanting to work this so it's a very smooth edge. And by working with my fingers against this edge, it, it becomes smooth and even, and it's not likely to stretch further. But if I rotate this around and we look at this edge here, I could actually pull this edge apart. I could pull that fiber apart. So this bit hasn't been sealed, but this bit here is all starting to come together nicely. So that's what I want to do the whole way around this piece. And I can really feel this felting very nicely. I'm happy with this. I add more soap. It's really important to have soapy hands when you're doing this. And take your time. If, if I was making a bag, which would be made around a resist the same way as a bowl or vessel, there could be a flap and a shoulder strap and all sorts of things to seal and you won't waste your time by just spending a few minutes doing this. It really helps with the finished piece. And then I'm just going to rub around the edge. And can you see, I hope you can see, that this is what I removed this here but already this opening is significantly bigger so this is just important for you to understand you need to be aware that felt stretches the cut edge stretches so what I'm now going to do is I'm actually going to be able to put my full hand in here and what I actually want to do is put my hand over the edge of my template and I'm going to just ball my fist up inside the piece and then I'm going to give a little bit of a rub on the outside where the seam is. I'm going to just rotate around and I'm going to take my time doing this as well and this will help work out any potential ridges but I still have the template inside my piece right now. So in effect what my vessel is like at the moment it's actually like <laughs> almost like a balloon a balloon of wool and you can with bigger vessels use balloons to help you shape them but I'm not doing that with this smaller demonstration one I'm happy that there aren't any obvious ridges I'm just carefully working my way all around. If I feel the piece is a bit too dry, I'll just add some water with my hand. But already I think you, be, you can actually see that the embellishments from this side, they continue over there to the other side. And later on, when it becomes more three-dimensional, you're going to see this very clearly. almost back to where I started rubbing here. It's 
still putting my hands over the edge of that template but keeping the template inside. Now I can actually tell that this template could come out. It really doesn't feel that delicate inside at all. And what I'm going to do may seem surprising. I usually do this over a basin of water, but I'm not quite sure with this whether you can see it. I'm just turning it inside out. And I'm now going to work the vessel, that outside edge where the fiber went over the edge of my template. I'm going to work that with the decoration on the inside of the piece. And I think you can, you can see that there isn't a big seam or a ridge and that's because I was careful with the fiber that I was putting over the edge of the template not to have too much building up. So the, the green wool that was against the edge of the template, that always is going to be less felted than the outside because it's been protected somewhat. It's been closer to the center of the package. So you need to give some extra attention to the inside of your piece. So I just keep working around the seam with my hand on the inside. And I can feel this felt taking shape. It feels like it's getting firmer, literally, between my hands. And I can also rub it on the bubble wrap. Rotate it. I can go like this. So you can see the shape starting to take place. I could pull it. I could stretch it. It's quite... Um, malleable at this stage. I can make it into different shapes. I could deliberately put ridges in it, but I just want a nice simple rounded shape for the vessel and when it turns the other way out the embellishments will be beautiful, I hope. I can also take a little of the water out and I can roll it up on itself if I want, either in my hands or on the bubble wrap. With the template out of the middle, this is going to shrink even quicker. So I need to be careful not to do too much in any one direction without then making it more three-dimensional again. I could also consider rolling it this way with the opening at the top. So this shaping is something that you'll get used to doing yourself. And you just need to decide on how you want the piece to end up, what you want it to look like. But I was saying I wanted this particular piece to be just a simple rounded vessel, just a very simple shape. And it's a shape that I would use a lot if I was planning to eco print, because the eco printed pieces often look best when the design itself isn't too complicated. And now that I've given the inside a rub, I'm going to turn it back to the outside. And something that I could consider is I could consider making a lip with the green. And it could have a stitch later. But it could be quite interesting to have that green inside showing over the pink. And in fact, I quite like that. So I think I might consider that as an option. But this needs to shrink more. So at this stage, everything that I do is to shrink it 
to felt it to make it firmer and to get it into a shape that I like. So I want to, to shrink this more. So I'm going to actually get my wet towel. I'm going to forget about the bubble wrap for a minute. I'm going to get my wet towel and this is how I felt a lot of my pieces, how I finish a lot of them. I'll put the piece on the bubble wrap or the towel and I'll roll within the towel. That was 20 rolls. Look how much it's shrunk in that direction. So I can really stretch it. Put my thumb in and push it around that seam where the two edges join together. This is where I could use a felting tool or something like a spoon and just go around the edge like that to stretch it. Bang with the spoon. Everything that I'm aiming to do is to make the felt more firm and to shape it. And this also could be a good tool for going around the seam. But I'm just going to add a little bit more soap and water to this. I feel it's got a little bit dry. Now, if I wasn't recording this for you, I have to confess I would be going and getting some hot water and soap, but I'm just going to work with the cooler water because it will felt, it just will felt a little bit slower. I'm going to roll the piece up on itself and I'm going to roll it. That's 10. Can you see how much it's shrinking? So that's why I need to be careful not to just do it all in the one place. Stretch it. And this is really quite fun and at any stage you can leave the piece and you can come back to it a day or two later you don't have to do all of this in one one sitting but I must say when I'm making a vessel that's small like this I usually do it all in one go and I'm going to pull it so that the opening is here and I'm going to roll it in this direction to the opening of this other side. So I'm rolling in the opposite direction. And everybody has different ways of finishing their piece. happy with that shape yet. If I flatten the piece I can see it actually hasn't shrunk that much um, compared to my template so I would like to see a little bit more shrinkage so I may very well have to go and get some hot water. But if you live in a country where um, water is an issue you can also put your felt in the microwave and you can just turn your microwave on and that will heat the felt and you can then continue to work it. So I think I did like the green turned over at the top just providing a little bit of contrast to the pink. So I'm going to have another look at that now. Don't be afraid to change your mind about a piece. So 
So I actually do like the shape of this and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and give this a really good rinse in very hot water. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just squeeze that hot water into the piece. My intention is to get rid of all the soap that's in the vessel and I will open that up like that to do so. Then I'm going to give the table a wipe down and I'm going to come back and I'm going to do the final shaping when I have got the soap out of it. So it's important then that I clean the table, I'll give it a very quick wipe down, and I'm doing nothing except dunking this in hot water under my tap and getting rid of the soap, and then I'll come back and I will do the final shaping for you. So I've now given this a really good wash to get all the soap out of it. I just ran it under my hot tap and I just squeezed the clean water into the felt. I've given the table a wipe with clean water and now I need to do the final shaping and this with an exhibition piece this would take it could take days I would keep going back to it but with a simple vessel like this I'll have a look at it and actually you know I think I like it without that rim folded down but this is where it could be tweaked you could use a pair of pliers to pull the rim up you can move your hand inside, you can get felting tools, you can use your spoon, whatever you like to get the shape that you personally want with the piece. And if you remember what I said before, the embellishments go over the edge of the vessel. So all that needs to happen now with this particular piece is I need to um, be happy with the shape, I need to let it dry and there are different thoughts about that but you can put your piece on something like a towel once you've got it shaped the way you want and you can just let it dry very very slowly and naturally or what I often do is I'll actually put it on top of my Rayburn which is a range cooker it's got a top a lid that folds down um, or up and when the top is closed, I actually often just leave my felt on the cooker and it dries overnight. And in Ireland and England, we have things that we call hot presses, but you probably call them a closet. It's a warming closet. And the hot press would be somewhere else that you could dry your pieces. And I like giving a bang to the base of any piece that I make, just to make it a little bit firmer. But I think this should give you a good indication of how you too can make a simple felt vessel choosing one color for the body of the vessel and one or two colors for your embellishing fibers. And you remember I cut just such a small piece of wool out at the beginning, but I stretched that with my hands when I sealed it. And here's the original template. So because I did a lot of rubbing at the beginning, the vessel hasn't shrunk as much in this direction, but it has definitely um, shrunk some in that direction and it's nice and solid. And when this dries, this is a nice, just a simple piece. I could throw my car keys or something in. I could um, just, usually I leave these as purely decorative pieces, but it could be functional. There could be a little jar in there or anything you want and a few flowers coming out of it. If you've enjoyed this long and detailed wet felting tutorial, subscribe to my YouTube channel and check out my other tips and tutorials about wet felting. I also have plenty about eco printing. So if you like to transform your textiles, your felt or your clothing using leaves, onion skins and bark, check out my eco printing playlist. Thank you.